Hey there, this is Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is teaching tips and ed tech tips for new college instructors. So if that's you, go ahead and click subscribe below. Today we're talking more about Flippity.net. I have two videos about it already. One is a general tutorial, and one is about using the student name generator in your online or hybrid classroom. And so I'll link those videos below. But today it's a different generator tool, a random generator tool, but it has four different columns, which means you can use it in a lot of different ways. And so I'm gonna share my screen and show you some variety of ways you can first how to actually use a tool and then ideas for activities to do to get students more invested in your class. So here we are on Flippity and the random name picker is the one that I had mentioned in an earlier video and I use that all the time when picking my students on Zoom. But today I'm talking about this one, this Flippity randomizer. And so just to show you really quickly how it works, I'm gonna click demo here. And so it comes with this four column thing, right? The who, what, when, and where. And so this could be really great for like creative writing, for example. So you have this and then you could just spin, 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 and spin. And now your student has to write a story that features a US Senator who's having a fight over the last donut 20 years ago in a gingerbread house, right? And so this is an example of a creative writing prompt. And that's the demo here. But how to actually create your own template I'm going to go ahead and go back. And the first thing you're going to do, you can go through the instructions, but you might as well just go straight to the template since I'm going to give you instructions and you make a copy. Okay. And once you make a copy, you'll see this spreadsheet, though it will have different words on it. This is the one I've already created, but this is what it looks like. Okay. So you can give the title that you want. And so in my case, as one example, in my writing class, I show them a lot of terminology that we use and yet there's still a lot of confusion. So what I did here is I put my students' names, and these are fake names, not the names of my actual students. And then in the second column, I had the what, and so I had these concepts from class. Primary research, secondary, thesis, transfer, rhetorical triangle, and so on and so forth. And then in my third column, I changed the title to topic, and so now I have obviously topics that would interest my students, including two that are students' choice. So rather than always having to give these examples, if they fall on a student's choice, then they can choose whatever topic they want to create an example of these terms. And then time, past, present, or future. And so that connects to the topic. So for example, when I create this and it becomes a randomizer, if you know John has to talk about, um, let's say, you know, paraphrasing research about sports, but that happens in the future, then he can explain, okay, well, in the future, I can see there being an academic article about how COVID has affected, you know, how fans watch sports, you know, maybe changing the way that virtual fandom exists in the sporting world. And so if that were the case, then if I was writing a paper about this topic, then I can paraphrase part of this research. And that means that I'm going to get an idea from the research and I'm going to reword it and rephrase it and, you know, reiterate it in my paper in a new way so, and then connect it to my research that I'm doing in my paper. So that would be an example of paraphrasing an article about sports that is created in the future. And then we go to the next person. Okay, so that's just one example of how this works. So once you fill it out, and again, you can fill it out however you'd like, and I'll give you more examples in a second, you go to File, and then here, Publish to Web. And so once you do that, you do the entire document, and you click Publish. Are you sure you want to do this? And I say yes. Okay, and so now it's there. We're going to exit out of this, and then go down here to get the link here. Okay, and you click that. Here's a link, and you click on it. And now it's created my four column randomizer. And so once again, I'll just click these four. And so now my student Chris has to talk about the rhetorical triangle. So in this case, I'm talking about writer audience purpose using an example from a paper about college and taking place in the future, right? So something about how, how future college experience can be written about in this case, right? So then maybe Chris is like, okay, well in the future I can imagine that, you know, there's gonna be a lot more Zoom uh, use or, you know, Google Meets use in future classes, even when if they're not fully online, just, you know, face-to-face -face classes will have office hours that take place on Zoom rather than in person, right? Or something along those lines. And so if I was gonna write a paper about that, you know, with the rhetorical triangle, you know, me as a writer, I would be thinking about, you know, am I a college student at that point? That I'm thinking about it from the perspective of how would it influence my experience as a student, not how it would how it would affect me if I was a teacher, 
right? And then thinking of my audience, I'd probably write towards other students who are considering, you know, whether or not this Zoom element of college is for them or not, right? And the purpose of my paper would be to convince them that it's a great thing, right? Or the purpose would be to convince them that's not a good thing, that they should, you know, make sure to always have the office hours in person rather than on Zoom. Right, so this is one way of using this randomizer. Okay, so getting them to apply the concepts you're teaching them uh, in class with an example that they create on their own. Okay, but now again, going back to this, you can just keep making copies of this and do different ideas. Okay, so the creative writing one was already shown, right, where you just kind of do a who, what, when, where, how, and then you have to write a story. But you can other, you can do other prompts as well, right? So you might have, okay, well, we're gonna actually randomize who you know, debates somebody else talking about a concept from class. And so you can have column one is who, but column two could be who as well, right? So you have all the students and all the students, or if you're worried that they'll be doubling up, you can always do a certain half and a certain half on the two columns. And then column three can be topics for the debate, and column four could be concept that they have to connect from the class to their topic, right? And so when you create this randomizer, then you do the little buttons and you can see, okay, you know, um, Anna and Frederick, you're going to debate the topic of music as it relates to the concept of um, rhythm, right? Or the concept of um, popular culture, whatever it is that you're teaching in your class. And so debate style can be really good too by having two columns with your students' names. Now in literature classes, this can be a great analysis prompt tool. So, for example, you can have maybe in column one, a, the character names. Column two might be, you know, major concepts that you consider talking about in class. So maybe family dynamics or, you know, romantic relationships or, you know, superpowers, whatever it is that you're teaching. So you might have a concept tied to the class that you want to make sure that they discuss in relation to the characters. And then you could have, you know, in three, you're going to have to, you know, pick a scene or you're going to have to pick a quote. Or you're going to have to, you know, pick a chapter, the most important chapter that relates to this concept for this character, right? And so you kind of just create your columns and give them a sense of, okay, you know, now you have that we're going to talk about, let's use Frozen as an example. So you have the character of Elsa and, you know, the concept of sibling relationships. And you're going to tell me the most important quote from the movie in relation to, you know, this concept tied to Elsa in particular, not Anna. Right. And then you might have in your fourth column something else. So you might have the student name. Right. OK, so you're the one who has to tell me this or maybe a group. Right. So you have group numbers and you'll say, OK, you know, group one, this is what you're going to be doing in your small group discussion. Group two, group three, group four. OK, so just another idea. There's tons. Right. There's, this could be a really fantastic tool. And once again, it looks really cool when you actually use it. And it's very simple and quick to use. And just in case you find it hard to see on this part how it evens out, notice that at the top it does tell you the exact ones that were chosen to make it easy to see. You can also click here instead and do all of them at once, but you can do, do them individually if you want to maybe only change a student and have them do the same prompt, then that can work out really well as well. Go ahead and click like and subscribe if you haven't already, and if you have any of your own advice about Clippity, leave it in the comment section below. Here are two more videos that might interest you. Um, one is on Clippity, but another one is just something that I think would be helpful to learn about as well.